Hello friends and welcome to another video from my series Quick Thoughts On, in which I always talk about different stories from the rich Star Trek universe. 30 years and a bunch of weeks ago the next episode of Star Trek The Next Generation premiered. It was called Who Watches the Watchers and these are my honest opinions about it. This episode was written by Richard Manning and Hans Beimler. If you don't know who these guys are, they have been an important part of the writing team since season 1, which means that they clearly understand the Star Trek format. Another thing which is very clear is that they both know the theories of Erich von Deniken. In the case you don't know Deniken's theories, uh, I'll try to sum it up in a few sentences. He believes that thousands of years ago aliens have crash landed on Earth, which was inhabited by only monkeys. They needed some minerals, probably for repairing their spaceship, but mining it was pretty hard work. So some of the aliens took the monkeys and genetically modified them, creating the first humans. The aliens have then left, but they did return pretty regularly. And for the primitive humans, they were gods, and their technology was magic. His theories go much farther than that, but this is basically all that we need to know before this episode. Back to the current story, however. The Enterprise is in contact with an anthropology team on the planet Mintaka 3. They are secretly observing the natives, who are similar to Vulcans, but their society is an equivalent of an Earth's Bronze Age. The observation is behind a holographic wall, and when the team starts to chat with the Enterprise, something explodes, everybody is injured, and Picard rushes the ship to help them. But something surprising happens. Down on the planet, a father with his daughter see it together, the father, named Liko, ordered his daughter OG to stay there, while he himself climbs up the hill. To his shock, he sees the Enterprise crew beaming an injured scientist. Shocked, he touches the wall and gets electrocuted. Data sees it and informs the others. Dr. Crusher rushes out and after seeing his injuries, she decides to beam him aboard too completely ignoring the Prime Directive, as Captain Picard reminds her. Picard says something kind of out of character. He suggests that Beverly should let the men die. I'm not going to make any moral judgments, but it just feels weird coming from Picard's mouth. Anyway, Liko wakes up and notices that everybody takes orders from Picard and that this Picard guy is desperately trying to find somebody called Palmer. In reality, he's a scientist who got missing after the explosion. When Picard realizes that Liko is watching Beverly, he puts him to sleep, and she tries to use Dr. Pulaski's method to wipe his memory. Nice to see Dr. Pulaski getting mentioned, even though we don't get an explanation of what happened to her, but the important thing is that Beverly fails. When Liko wakes up back in Vasquez Rocks, uh, sorry, I mean back on Mintaka 3, he remembers everything and together with his daughter they go to the village and basically start a new religion. A religion in which Picard is God. So they just invented the Star Trek Phantom. Cool. Riker and Troy get surgically altered to look like Mintakans and beam down trying to find Palmer when they accidentally hear what Liko has to say. Diana tries to persuade him that it was just a weird dream, though, which sounds like a good idea, but then she says a very weird thing. When he says that his daughter has seen it too, Diana says that because they are father and daughter, they might have had the same dream. This sounds like the dumbest idea I have ever heard, or is it actually a thing? Can relatives have the same dream? But before we have a chance to think about it for too long, other villagers bring Palmer, and he's in a pretty bad shape. The Mintakans are shocked because they have never seen a human before, or at least they think, and they all start to believe in Picard and in his divine powers, 
and I couldn't Troy come up with a plan how to save Palmer. Troy says that she has seen another guy like Palmer and they all run out to get him. Everybody except for Riker, the elderly man named Fento, and Palmer. Riker manages to bind Fento and escape with Palmer, but he can't get far enough. OG noticed them, so we have a little chase scene, but as soon as Riker outruns them, he beams with Palmer directly to sickbay, leaving Troy with the villagers as a prisoner. I'm not sure, but I start to think they didn't think that plan through. So, what to do now? Dr. Baron, the lead scientist, says, screw the Prime Directive, play God, which is not acceptable for Picard. So, in the end, he chooses the lesser of the multiple evils, and as soon as the village leader named Nuria is alone, they beam her on board. Being the logical creature she is, she falls down on her knees and behaves like she believes that Picard is God. Well, Picard tries to desperately explain to her that they're all just like the Mintakans, just more evolved. First she seems like she understands, but she then starts to ask him to bring their dead people back to life. She first has to see the death of a female scientist. I have no clue who she is, but Dr. Baron behaves like she was much more for him than simply a colleague. Anyway, as soon as Nuria understands that Picard is not a god and he can't prevent people from dying, she is on his side and they could beam down to the planet. And just in time. A weird storm starts and Liko claims that it's a sign that Picard is angry, that Troy helped to kidnap his servant Palmer, so he decides to do the sensible and logical thing. He decides to kill her, to appease the deity. Why exactly were they compared to the Vulcans? I mean, they're not very logical. Anyway, Picard and Nuria beam down just in time to stop him from shooting Diana, so, what does Liko do now? To prove his theory that Picard is immortal, he threatens to shoot him with his arrow, and Picard allows it. I have to say, Liko is one of the dumbest characters in TNG history, and Picard has balls. Of course, Picard gets injured, but this time Dr. Crusher is actually competent, and saves him. So, we end up in a weird way, with the Mintakans, a pre-warp civilization, knowing about the existence of the Federation and life on other planets, and if I remember correctly, Picard never gets punished for the violation. You know, I love this episode, even though it's far from perfect. For example, why does the Federation observe primitive civilizations from places like this. How did they make the base without anybody noticing them? We see that Mintakans are going in these places, so how did nobody notice weird aliens building a base, cutting it inside a mountain? Where did the rocks which were drilled out end up? Did the Federation workers beam them immediately away? Did they beam the rocks to space? What advantages do places like this base have? Why are the explorers not on a starship orbiting the planet? They do have sensors which can scan the planet from space, and even if they didn't, they still can do the same thing as Troy and Riker did. They could send Earth scientists masked as Mintakans to live with the villagers for some time, as we have seen visitors are welcome here, and uh, they are apparently pretty common. I'm sorry, I just like when the premise of an episode makes logical sense and I can't find a logical reason for the secret observation bases like this one. I don't know what to think about the fact that uh, it was shot at Vasquez Rocks. It looks great, but the location has definitely been overused on track. I also have problem with the Mintakans themselves. They are described as proto-Vulcans living in an equivalent of the Earth's Bronze Age, but they do look more like an European village from the Middle Ages. 
and they are not very logical, which is the first adjective which comes to mind with when somebody mentions the Vulcans. Anyway, the positive things, in my opinion, outweigh the negatives. I love the fact that they are exploring a possible way how religions could have been created. I love the moral question this episode gives us, and I love probably even more, the fact that it doesn't give us answers to these questions. This is definitely one of the episodes which sticks in your mind decades after you see it. It definitely did stick in mine. On my standard scale from 0 to 10, where 0 is complete garbage, 10 is a masterpiece and 5 is just average, I would give this episode 8 out of 10. Definitely above average, but not perfect. But as always, these were just my opinions, let me know what did you think about this episode, did you love it, hate it, or did you think it was just average? Let me know what do you think about it down in the comment section. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button, and if you have some free time, feel free to watch any of the other videos on my channel. You should see some links uh, on screen right now. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in a few days. Bye.